This is the Fifth Estate Tribe of Mentors, where each week we profile voices from around the world that can inspire and make an impact to us on the continent. This is an opportunity to reflect, an opportunity to find one's Kairos moment. Kairos is an ancient Greek word meaning the right, critical or opportune moment. The ancient Greeks had two words for time, chronos and kairos. The former refers to chronological or sequential time, while the latter signifies a proper or opportune time for action. Kairos time calls for action, for conversion and transformation, a change of life. Kairos is a point of opportunity and favor, and God assists us in discerning the Kairos, this moment of grace. And we hope these voices will help you along this journey. Today's tribe of mentor is Chinese business magnate and billionaire Jack Ma. Learn from the mistakes the other people, no matter how smart you are, you will encounter these mistakes. You learn from mistakes not because you will be able to avoid mistakes. You will able to, when these mistakes come, this suffer comes, you know how to deal with it. Jack Ma is the founder of the e-commerce giant Alibaba and is a stakeholder at Alipay, its sister company that is an e-payment portal. He is the richest man in China with an estimated net worth of about $25 billion. Alibaba is worth more than Facebook and processes goods more than eBay and Amazon combined. Many years ago, so people say, Jack, um, uh, no, Bill Gates. I say, well, I can never be as rich as Bill Gates, but one thing I can do better than him, I can retire earlier than him, right? I can do something that is from education field. I can do unique, different, and something in my Jack Ma's mind. So <clears throat> I will learn from uh, Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, a lot of great uh, philanthropists in the world, but I want to do something using my own way. Ma is part of the Ant Group, which is the world's highest valued fintech company. Most recently, the company was ready to shatter records with a $37 billion initial public offering on November 2020 with a reported estimated valuation of about $300 billion. Alipay's parent company, Ant Group, is getting global attention in 2020. Its combined IPOs in Hong Kong and Shanghai could be one of the largest listings ever, as Ant is aiming for a market valuation in excess of $200 billion. That means it may sell more than $20 billion in shares when it goes public. Jack Ma is a true rags to riches story and definitely one which will inspire you even on your darkest days. You see, rejection and failure are synonymous with Jack Ma. You wouldn't believe the number of times this man has been rejected and failed. I went for a police. They said, no, you're not good. I went to even the uh, KFC. When KFC came to China, come to my city, <laughs> You 20, 24 people went for the job. 23 people accepted. I was the only one guy. <laughs> and we went for police. Five people, four of them accepted. I was the only guy that I rece received it. <laughs> so to me, being turned down, rejected. Oh, by the way, I told you that I, would, I applied for Harvard yeah. for 10 times rejected. <laughs> I know I'll be rejected. Sorry I just don't now. want to say that. Yeah, sorry now. <laughs> In his early childhood, Jack Ma failed in his primary school examinations, he failed his middle school exams, he even applied and wrote to Harvard University 10 times about being admitted, and he got rejected each time. There is an examination that young people, if you want to go to university, you have to take the examinations. So I failed three times. But a lot of fail. I failed for funny things that I failed a key primary school test for two times. And I failed uh, um, like uh, two, three times for the middle school, middle schools. And uh, you, you will never believe in, in Hangzhou, my city, there's only one middle school that lasts only one year. It was changed from primary school to middle school because our graduates of our, our, our school, no, univers you, no middle school accept us because we were too bad. Yeah. <laughs> They will become a middle school. 
Jack Ma visited the US in 1995 and he was first introduced to the internet and computers. And he then and there decided it was time for China and its people to get on the internet. Ma started his first successful company at the age of 31, never having written a single line of code or selling something to anyone. Jack Ma now runs one of the biggest e-commerce networks in the world. The company grew rapidly, expanding all across the world. It is second only to Walmart in terms of sales per year. Take a look as he talks to us about embracing failure and rejection and building the economy of trust and how being successful in the 21st century truly means empowering others. Welcome, Jack Ma. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you. We, uh, we, um, we've all become very cognizant of Jack and his story. And when Alibaba went public with the largest IPO in history, uh, we knew a lot more about him. So I want to talk about his personal story I want to talk about how many times he tried and failed and what kept him going. I want to talk about where he is today and how he got here and where he is going and how he expects to get there. And if he gets there, what will it all mean for him and for the people uh, that he wants to inspire? So I begin with this question though, Jack, why are you back at Davos? <laughs> it's a, it's a, long break for seven years. I think uh, my last time trip here was year 2008. But um, I was coming for year 2001 for the Young Global Leader for Tomorrow. And I think, remember, I never heard about the Davos when I came. But when I came, I, uh, I, in the Switzerland, so many young people demonstrate. It was such a horrible thing that I was, and, and I asked them, oh, why did they do it? They say anti-globalization. And I say, why? Globalization is a great thing. Why people ant you know, don't like it? <laughs> and then we come all the way for two hours here. There's a machine gun. There's a people checking us. I say, oh, God, is that, is that a fallen or is that a prison? We're going to go with that. <laughs> but when I joined the fallen uh, at the Young Global Leader, I was thrilled by uh, so many ideas. And for the first three, four years, I learned what, what, does, what does the globalization mean? What does the corporate citizenship mean? What about social responsibility mean? And all these new ideas, and I see so many great leaders talking about leadership. And I benefit a lot. In the year 2008 and <clears throat> nine, when the financial crisis came, I think it's better go back to work because we can never win the world by talking. So go back, spend seven years. Now I come back, I think it's time to do something return. So I learned so much Let's talk 12 about years that. ago. So why I should not talk to the young global leader of today, sharing with them how we gone through. So that was the thing. Let's start with where you are today. Just how big is Alibaba? How many people come every day? How many people come in a week? Uh, how fast is it growing? Yeah, we have uh, over a hundred million buyers visiting our site, shopping our site um, every day. And we created- A hundred million, million every day. We created um, uh, 14 million jobs for China, directly and indirectly. <clears throat> and um, we grow from 18 people to 30,000 people, 18 people in my apartment, to now we have four big campers. Compared to 15 years ago, we were big, but compared to 15 years later, we're still a baby. And, <laughs> how big will you be 15 years from now? I think 15 years ago, 
I told my team that um, 15 years, in the past 15 years, we grow from nothing to this size. And 15 years later, I want people to see know about Alibaba, know Taobao, because it's already everywhere. I want 15 years ago when we talk about what is e-commerce, why small business can using this e-commerce, those internet can do business across the nation. And I hope 15 years later, people forget about e-commerce because they think it's like electricity. Nobody think it's a high tech today. Now this is something that I don't want 15 years later, we still walk on the street talking about why and how e-commerce can help people. Talk about the IPO, Were you, did, did it exceed your expectations? Well, it's a pretty small IPO, 250. Yes, yeah, two, the largest two, IPO two. in the history of Wall Street. <laughs> of we the raised, world. we, yeah, we and, raised. And number two was a Chinese bank. Thank you. I, I, uh, I remember year 2001, we went to uh, raise some uh, five million, three million venture capitalist dollars in the USA and got rejected. And I say we come back raising some a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> but I, uh, I think, uh, you know, what we think more about is for $25 billion, how we can spend the money efficiently because this is not the money, this is the trust from the world, the trust from those people. They want you to do better jobs, to help more people. They want to have a good return. So I think um, giving me more pressure because um, when our, our market cap is bigger than IBM, or certain day we're bigger than Walmart. We're one of the top 10, 15 largest market cap company in the world. I told my team and myself, is that true? We're not that good. Because years ago, people say, oh, Alibaba model is terrible. Does not make money, have this and that, all the big bad things because Amazon is better, eBay is better, Google is better, and there's no such model like Alibaba in the USA. So I told myself and people, we were better than people thought. But today, when we are that big size, I said, no, we are not that good as people thought. We are just a company 15 years old. Average age is 27, 28 years old, young people. We are doing something that human beings have never tried. So I want, I want to talk about the future. Let me take you back uh, to when you were born in Hangzhou. Uh, where the headquarters still are, yep. uh, and your campus is there. You don't have a loot, don't, don't move your loot. Your headquarters your there, there. Yeah, you found it there, loot there. You grew up in the 60s. 64. <laughs> Born in 64. That was the time of the Cultural Revolution. Yeah, it was the end of the Cultural Revolution. It was, uh, well, my grandfather was uh, a tiny landlord, was considered, after liberation, was considered to be a bad guy. So um, <clears throat> I was, um, I, 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 I know how tough it was uh, when I was a kid. You tried to get into three colleges. Mm -hmm. Each time they rejected you. No, I, I tried, there is uh, examination that young people, if you want to go university, you have to taste take the examinations. So I failed three times. Right. But I had a lot of fail. I failed for funny things that I failed a key primary school test for two times. And I failed uh, um, like a two, three times for the middle school, middle schools. And uh, you, you will never believe in, in Hangzhou, my city, there's only one middle school that lasts only one year. It was changed from primary school to middle school because our graduates of our, our, our school, no, you, no middle school accept us because we were too bad. Yeah. <laughs> they would become a middle school. <laughs> what effect did it have, though, uh, being rejected? Well, I think we have to get used to it. We're not that good. Even today, we still have a lot of people reject us. I think um, when I uh, in the, graduated from universities, and before I, you know, for three years I tried to fill in the universities. So I applied jobs for 30 times, 
got rejected. I went for a police. They said, "No, you're not good." I went to even even the uh, KFC. When KFC came to China, come to my city, twenty twenty four people went for the job. Twenty three people were accepted. I was the only one guy. <laughs> and we went for police. Five people, four of them accepted. I was the only guy that I received receive it. So to me, being turned down, rejected. Oh, by the way, I told you that I would I applied for Harvard for ten times, rejected. <laughs> I know you reject. I just want to say that. Yeah, sorry now. <laughs> Ten times you wrote them and said, "I'd like to come to Harvard." Yeah, <clears throat> and then I told myself someday I should go teach there, buddy. <laughs> I, I, I think that can be arranged. Um, Richard Nixon came to Hangzhou. Yeah, and after that, tourists flooded the place. Yeah, and that's how you learned English. Yeah, I really. Like the, I don't know why, at 12, 13 years old, that time I suddenly fell in love into the language, the English. And there's no place you can, you can learn English at that time. There's no books, English books. So I went to the、uh, Hangzhou Hotel, now called Hangzhou Shangri-La Hotel, because that was the hotel、uh, can receive the foreign visitors. So every morning for nine years, I showed them around as a free guide, and they taught me English. And、uh, I think that changed me. Today I'm 100% made in China. I've never got a one-day train outside China. Yeah. And、uh, people, when people talk to me, say, Jack, how can you speak English like that? Why sometimes you you talk like an American Western guys? I think that was the nine years. These Western for tourists opened my mind because everything they told me are so different from the things I learned from the schools and from my parents. So now I have a habit. Whatever I see, whatever I read, I use my mind. Think about for two、And、minutes. Is that how Ma Jun became Jack Ma? Actually, Jack. The name was given by、uh, a, a, a lady in tennis. She's a tourist. She came here and she said, came to Hangzhou. We had a, we become a pen friends. Ma Ring is so difficult to pronounce. So she said, do you? You have an English name? I said, "Don't." So, can you give me an English name? She said,、uh, "Okay." She said, "My father called the Jack. My husband called Jack. What do you think about Jack?" I said, "Good." <laughs> so I've been using that for that many years.、Yeah. <laughs> uh, first visit to America, 1995. 1995. Yeah, I、uh, I've come here for a project, helping the local government to building up a highway. Uh, and you tried the internet. I tried the internet in Seattle, and、um, in a building called the U.S. Bank. I don't know whether U.S. Bank is still there or not, but it's a building. And、uh, this, uh, my friend opened a small office, which is like、uh, only 10 percent bigger than this room. And there are a lot of much computers in there. And、uh, he said,、uh, "Jack, you, this is internet." Was I asked, "What is internet?" He said, "You know, search whatever you want." At that time, they used Mosaic. Very slow,、right? and I said I don't use it. I don't want to type because internet computer is so expensive in China. If I destroy it,、yes. I cannot pay. He said just to search it. So I searched the first word of beer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why because easy to spell, ah baby. <laughs> and I see beers from Germany, beers from USA, beers from uh, uh, Japan. But there's no beer from China, and I say, okay, type the second word is China, no data, nothing, nothing, and I say, 1995, 1995, no data about China. So I talked to my friend, why not make some something about China? So we made、um, a small, very ugly looking page called China. It's it's about it's something like I did a translation agency we listed on there. It was so shocking. We launched at 9:40 in the morning. 12:30, I got a phone call from my friend. He said, "Jack, you know, you got five emails." I said, "What is email?" <laughs> <laughs> And they said, "These are the things." So people so excited. Where are you? This is the first time I see a Chinese website on that. How can we kind of when can we do something together? So I think this is something interesting. So we should do it. Why did you call it Alibaba? Alibaba. Well, when I started, I think 
Internet is global. We should have a global name, and a name that、um, interesting. Like at that time, the best name is Yahoo, right? I think I can. So I've been thinking for many days. Suddenly, think, Alibaba is a good name. So I, I was happened to be in San, San Francisco that day. I have a, have a lunch, and the waitress come. I ask her, "Do you know about Alibaba?" She said, "Yes." I said, "What is Alibaba?" She said, "Open Sesame." Good. So I went on the street, asked about ten, twenty people. They all know about Alibaba, Forty Thieves, and、uh, Open Sesame. And I think this is a good name. And start with A. Whatever you talk about, Alibaba is always top. <laughs> you have said before that in creating Alibaba, you had to create trust. Yeah.、Uh, because people in China were used to face to face. Yeah. How did you create trust? I think、uh, because we started by doing business on the internet. I don't know you, you don't know me. So how can you do things online unless you have trust? So for e-commerce, the most important thing was trust. I think when I first went to USA for raising money, talked to the venture capitalists. A lot of people say, "Oh, Jack, no, 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 no." China doing business by the Guanxi. How can you do business on internet? And I know that without the trust system, the credit system, it's impossible to do business. So we, we every in the past four, fourteen years, everything we do is trying to build up the trust system, the record system. Well,、uh, Charlie, you know, I, I, I'm so proud today when I, I talk to the young. Today in China and in the world, people don't trust each other. The government and people and, and media and everybody think, ah, this guy is cheating. But because of e-commerce, we finish 60 million transactions every day. People don't know each other. I don't know you. I send products to you. You don't know me. You wire the money to me. And I don't know you. I give a per- person a package. I don't know him. He took something. To so cross the ocean, cross river, and send. This is the trust we have. Six, at least the sixty million trust happening every day. But you created by creating an escrow account in the beginning. Yep. You know, and so you keep the money until they got the product. Yeah. And then you release the money. That's true. I mean, the escrow service is about AliPay. When I, when I, when I, ha- you know, this idea would love Davos, because it was a big decision. Because for first three years, Alibaba is just like e-marketplaces for, for information. Ah,、uh, what you have, what I have. We talk a lot of time, but don't do any business because there is no payment. I talk to the banks. No banks want to do it. Banks say, ah,、oh, no, this thing never work. So, I don't know what to do, because if I start to launch a payment system, it's against the financial legal laws, because you have to have a license. But if I don't do it, e- e-commerce will go nowhere. So then, I went to Davos. I listened to a leadership discussion. Leadership is about responsibility. And after I talk, listened to that panel, I give a call to my friends, my colleagues in the, my apartment, say, "Do it now, immediately. If something wrong, the governor happy about that. If one body has to go to the prison, Jack might go to the prison, because it is so important for China." For the world to build up the trust system, and if you do not do it, I said, and do not do it properly, stealing money, money wash, no trust record, I send you to the prison. Yeah, <laughs> so、yeah. that was the thing. And people, people don't like it. So many people I talked to at that time for AliPay, they say this is the stupidest idea you have ever got. But I say <laughs> I don't wear the stupid、yeah. club as long as people use it. Now we have eight、uh, hundred million people using this AliPay. Stupid yeah, things. If you do whatever is better. AliPay is a privately held thing. It's not part of Alibaba. No, it's a. Let me talk about money for a second.、Yeah. Uh, you have never gotten money from the Chinese government. No, none, none. I, 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 I,、um, I want it at the beginning, and later I don't want it because I think if the company always think about it, picking money from out of the government off pockets, that company is. It's rubbish. 
Think about how can you make money from the customers and market, and then help customers succeed. That's our philosophy. No money from Chinese banks. No, no. I, I at that time I want, and now they want to give me. I don't want it. Yeah. <laughs> right. um, your relationship with the government. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's your relationship? I mean, if they didn't want, here's what some say: uh, that you have existed in an environment that's not. You know, they have restricted competition for you. And that's a pretty good thing to do for a private company. Yeah. I think the relationship with the government for us is very interesting. For the first five years, because I've been working as a part-time jobber for a government organization called Ministry of Foreign Trade, 1997, for 14 months. And I learned that you, you should never rely on government organization to do e-commerce. And I um, started a business, I told my people and team, in love with the government, don't marry them. <laughs> yes. Respect them. And yeah. a lot of people say, well, you know, government officers talking to about internet, the censorship and this, that, and they worry about. I think it's the opportunity, it's a responsibility talking to them. Tell them how internet can help. So you tell them we create jobs. Oh yeah, I've been, I think, um, a lot of people debate and fight against them. And in the first 12 years, anybody come to my office, I sit down talking to them, how we can help economy, how we can create jobs, why China will improve by the internet. I think um, because internet at that time is new to any government. And if you convince somebody, and you have the chance. so. Today I'm very talkative. That probably this is why I talk to so many people. <laughs> so I mean, if the government comes to you and asks you to do something for them, mm -hmm. normally when government comes say, Jack, can you do this project? I say no. I can no. I say no. Can you, I can introduce some friends who are interested in doing that for you? But if, you, if they continue to want me to do it, I say, okay, I do it, but I don't want, I don't charge. I hope next time don't come to me again. But recently, we helped some government organizers do it. For example, the, 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 every spring festival, the train station, the train ticket is so difficult. Hundreds and thousands of farmers work in the cities. In the spring festival, they go to the hometown. But when they order tickets on the on the, uh, <clears throat> the, 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 the other way, the whole system crashed for five years. So I told my young people, go support them. Don't charge anything because I don't want to see millions of farmers go back to city and they cannot buy the tickets. So it's, it's something that it's not for money. It's something I, it's not for the government. It's for the millions and millions of people. They can buy tickets in the snowy night and they don't have to wait. They just buy, use mobile phone, online, they get a ticket. Uh, one way stop along the route to where you are in that big IPO was Yahoo. Jerry Yang gave you, a, invested a billion dollars. Yeah. A billion dollars. Yeah. It turned out to be a pretty good investment for Yahoo. Yeah. But one time after another, you raised this money on your own outside of China with investors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm very thankful for all the investors because um, 1999, year 2000, and even at the Yahoo time, a lot of people say, this Jack is crazy. He's, he's doing something that we don't understand. And a lot of venture capitalists give you money because there is such a American model already there. But they say, Alibaba, we don't see this kind of model. Right? They and say then, Jack's crazy. Is what yeah, this is a crazy guy. I mean, yeah. I remember my first time in Time Magazine. They call me Crazy Jack. <laughs> and I, I think crazy is good. We are crazy, right. but we're not stupid. <laughs> 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 we know what we are doing. But if everybody agree with me, if everybody believe my, our idea is good, we have no chance. So that's the money we raised. We're very thankful. So when the, our investors make a lot of money, I feel proud and honored. As you know, in the United States, issues have risen about privacy. Yeah. Uh, Google and Apple, and questions of, of whether the government should have access to files. How do you handle that if the Chinese government 
says, you know a lot about people. Mm -hmm. You have transactional relationships with lots of people. Mm -hmm. And they say, we want to see your files. Well, so far, I don't have this kind of problems of our Chinese government. And I told them, any government, if you come here for the national security, anti-terrorist, well, anywhere, anti-terrorist, we work together. It's a criminal, we work. The rest of that, no. I said, we are a business. The data is so precious, because we don't know how. Because if we give to anybody, it's going to be a disaster. And also about privacy issues, the, <clears throat> I think, just like uh, hundreds of years ago, people say, I would have rather put money under my pillow rather than put in the banks. But today, banks, they're special. They know how to protect money much better than you do. Privacy issues, all these kind of securities, today, we may not have the solutions. We don't have the answer. But I believe our young people have the solutions. In the next 10, 20 years, there will be breakthrough on that. And I, I'm fully confident on that. Your life is a testament to the idea that nothing is impossible. That if somebody says no, you say it's just the beginning. Where does that come from? Well, I uh, at the beginning I never thought. Um, I, I thought when I was young, I said everything's possible. Now I know not everything's possible. When you have something, you have to think about. You have to consider about the others. You have to consider about the customer, society your employees, your shareholders, so, so, so. there are so many things that I think if you continue to work hard, there's, there's possibility. And um, I just feel that I'm enthusiastic about what we are doing. At the beginning, for the first five years, I just want to survive. And five years later, I think... That's 2000 from 90... <coughs> yeah. But later, I think, wow, so many people's lives changed. I was so excited, you know, for the first three years, we made a zero revenue, zero revenue. But we, we are so excited to continue to work. You know what happened? I remember many times when I go to a restaurant, have a dinner. Somebody came, I, when I was trying to pay the bill, the owner of the restaurant came to say, sir, your bill is paid by someone. And the small note say, Hey, Mr. Ma, I'm your customer of Alibaba Group, Alibaba platform. I made a lot of money, and I know you don't make any money. I pay the bill for you. <laughs> yeah. And I remember one thing. One day that I was uh, sitting somewhere in the coffee, somebody sending me a cigar. I don't smoke cigar, but there's a note that, Thank you very much. I'm your customer. <laughs> and I remember the top of days, I was at the Shangri-La Hotel in Beijing when I get on the taxi. A man who opened the door for me, the, the boy at the, at the gate, he said, Jack, thank you very much. I'm, so I'm you... service here. My girlfriend makes more money than I do on your site. And this is something that you know that it's not amazing. If you don't do it, nothing's possible. If you try to do it, at least you have the hope. The revenue comes from advertising and a smaller amount from transactional fees. Yeah. Most of it from advertising. Tiny. Tiny from advertising? Tiny from advertising, tiny from transactions. Because we need big mass. When we, now we have more than 10 million small business, power sellers selling our site to everywhere. So the big trans, the transactions we have is second after Walmart. So tiny. Second after Walmart. Yeah. Tiny of the transact, of, of the money, already make us, make us big. So, you know, we, second after Walmart, I remember one of the senior management of Walmart guys came to Hangzhou five years ago. He said, Jack, you know, you did a great job and blah, blah, blah. So we, I said, uh, maybe in 10 years we'll be bigger than Walmart. He said, young man, you have a good hope. <laughs> so we said, I'll make a map, bet. I yeah. think in 10 years we'll be bigger than Walmart on the sales because if you want to have 10,000 new customers, you have to build a new warehouse and this, that. For me, two servers. What's your market cap versus Wall Street? 
Walmart today? I I don't know, but I maybe yeah, some. It's close. I think so. Maybe we should check later. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so where are you going? What does Jack want? I think because the name for Alibaba, we are internet company, happen to be in China. We have the same spirit and entrepreneur spirit like every great entrepreneurs in the world. And I remember the day when I started Alibaba. We want to have a mission helping small business doing easier. So next up, today so many millions of small business using our platform to sell things, and over 300 million consumers buy things from our site. Cheapest, efficient. So what I'm thinking about how we can make Alibaba a platform for global small business. My vision is that how you know if we can help a Norway small business can sell things to Argentina, and Argentina consumers can buy things online from uh, from Switzerland, and we can build up a, which I called uh, I don't know maybe the right not right word called EWTO. The WTO is great past the century. But WTO helps so many big companies to sell things across the nation. Today, internet can help small business sell things across the oceans, across the nations. And I hope that um, we can serve two billion consumers. Two billion two, consumers. Two billion consumers. We can help ten million small business outside China. Help them outside China. Outside China, because I'm so because we we help the American farmers in Washington State. Almost 300 tons of cherries to China last year. Cherries. When they when we before we sell the ambassador of U.S. came to me said, Jack, can you help us selling cherries in China? Said, What cherries and the fruits? He said, Why not? I said, Why not? Let's try. So that when we order, when we start to sell cherries, the cherries still on the trees. So we start a pre-order. Eighty thousand families order cherries online. So we we pick up the cherries and ship into China. Within forty-eight hours, we sell the cherries. The consumers are so happy. And but we got a lot of letters complain after three days. They say, why only a hundred tons? Why we should not get more? So we sell, you know, last, last two months ago we helped the Costco. We sell 300 tons of nuts to China. So I'm thinking about if we can sell. Oh no, we're also selling Alaska seafood to China. So if we can sell seafood, we could, if we can sell the cherries, why we cannot help American and European small business selling things to China consumers? China needs that. So this is what I want to do is that. Two billion consumers, China, Asia, developing nations. How we can let them buy things globally? Alibaba rode with the millions of people that went from poverty to the middle class in China. I mean, you were right there, growing as they grew and increased. When you look at the international markets, you're doing well in Russia. Yeah. How well? We do pretty good on Russia, and we do, pre uh, do also pretty good on Brazil. Brazil. Russia, I think now uh, we I don't know we are the if not the number one, we are the number two or number three largest e-commerce. Uh, e-commerce. I remember last year we had a campaign. The campaign is that a lot of Russian girls and boys want to buy things from China. You know how many days a Russian girl put it place in order. And receive the products from China. Two years ago, four months. Even that, people are so happy about all the thing. And last year, the campaign, within one week, we crashed the whole logistics system of Russia. All right. You were also seen in Hollywood. Yeah. What are you doing in Hollywood? <laughs> <laughs> well, I like the uh, the Hollywood.、Um, Innovation at the digital ground. I learned so much about the Hollywood movies, especially the Forrest Gump. You love Forrest Gump. I love Forrest Gump.、But、why do you like him? Simple. Never give up. 
And the, people people thinking he's done, but he knows what he's doing. And I was very depressed the day, a year two thousand two or three, in the states, when I oh no 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 very early than that, I was very depressed when I I could not find out a way for the internet, and I watched the movie in my friend's home Forrest Gump. When I see him, I say, this is the guy we should learn from. Believe what you're doing. Love it, whether people like it, don't like it, be simple. And like the word, life is like a box of chocolate. You never know what you can get, right? <laughs> I never know I would be here talking to you, and talking to Charlie Rose. I never know. But today I made it. I told my people in my apartment, 18, 15 years ago. Guys, we have to work hard, not for ourselves. If we can be successful. 80% of the young people in China can be successful. We don't have a rich father, powerful uncle. We don't have one dollar from bank, one cent from government. Just work as a team. So what do you worry about? I worry about it today. Young people, a lot of young people lose hope, lose vision, and start to complain. Because I, we also have the same period. Because when I got, it's not a good feeling being rejected by so many people. We also depressed, but at least later we find that the world has a lot of opportunity. How you see the world, how you catch the opportunity. So, and the Hollywood gives me a lot of uh, inspiration. You yeah. know, but but you, you were the, out there for business. You were yeah. out there because you want to make movies and sell them. I want to make the movie for business wise. We are e-commerce company. We we have a lot of uh, products. That need logistic, but movie, TV, these are things you don't need logistic system. And movie probably is the best product that can help Chinese young people to understand. Because one thing I told the Chinese people, uh, my my friends, in American movie, all the heroes at the beginning they look like a bad guy, but ter terrible things coming, they become a hero, and finally they all survived. China, if you buy a movie, hero, all the hero died. <laughs> so, because change only that. dead people yeah. become the hero. Yeah. So yeah. nobody want to be the hero. <laughs> so you want to change the Chinese definition of hero? Yeah, I want to say hero. Are you Today we have so many heroes live in this world. Now, are you still writing these kung fu novels, or are you just reading them? I uh, read them, and I start to write something. <laughs> I think it's fine. The kung fu is something you. You start to think about something that you cannot do, but if you have some luck, if you continue to practice, if you got a good master, if a good team, you get expert. So, at least to make me when I'm busy, when I'm tired, or frustrated, I read kung fu books. And yeah. you also have, uh, travel with a tai chi. Am I saying that right? Uh, a trainer. Trainer. Tai chi. Tai chi. Tai chi. Tai chi. Yeah. Uh, what does that do for you, I other love, than keep you in good? I love good tai health? chi. Tai Chi is a philosophy about yin and yang. Yeah. Tai Chi is about uh, how you balance, how you work like a competition. People say when I compete with eBay, say you hate eBay. No, 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 I don't hate eBay. It's a great company. You know they come, I go. You know Tai Chi is like you fight here, I go over there. <laughs> you put it on the top, I go to down. Right, so yeah. it's a balance. <laughs> right, you are heavy, I'm small. You know. When I'm small, I can jump. You're heavy, you cannot jump. So, the Tai Chi is better philosophy. I use in Tai Chi philosophy in the in the business. Calm down. There's always way out. And keep yourself balanced. And meanwhile, don't try to keep because business is is a comp competition. Is a fun. Business is not like a battlefield. You uh, you die or I win. Business, even if you die, I may not win. Right, so it's about it's about a fun. So Tai Chi give me a lot of uh, inspirations. You, but you want your life and you want this company Alibaba to change the world, and, and you're changing the world. If in fact uh, you provide a forum for buying and you enable people to earn a living, yeah. um, but also you believe that Alibaba ought to change the lives of women. So what are you doing? At first, I think uh, many years ago, I want to change the world. Now, I think if we want to change the world, we change ourselves. Change ourselves is more important and easier than change the world. 
And second is that I want to improve the world. Because it changed the world, maybe Obama's job. <laughs> because my job is to making sure that my team are happy. Because my team are happy, they can make my customer happy. If my customer, they are all small business. When they are happy, we are happy. About women, one of the secret sauce for Alibaba's success is that we have a lot of women. What percentage of women in well, among Well, one day employees? before, I think two months before, two or three months before we IPO, there's Ameri there American journalists come to our company. She, she asked me a question. Check, I've seen so many women in your company. I say, what's wrong? <laughs> we have a later, we find that, you know, we, we have 30, or we have 47% of the employees of our company are women. How many? 40? 47% of our company are women. And we actually had a 51 because we acquire some company these days. They have more men, so balance that. <laughs> But these are women in top level positions. Thirty three percent of the senior ma of the management are women, and twenty four percent of the senior management, very top level, are women. We have a women CEO, CFO, CPO, chief people officer, and we have everywhere. And I think so comfortable to working with them because women in this world, if you want to win in twenty first century, you have to making sure that making other people powerful, empower others, making sure the other people better than you are, then you will be successful. So I find the women, they think about the others more than they think about themselves. Yeah, women yeah. think about the kids, husband, parents, much more than the men. And the user friendliness. A, a, a couple of things I want to talk about before we go, because we have less than a couple of minutes. Uh, China today, are you worried the economy slowed down? No. Oh. I don't worry about it. I think China is doing, it's slowing down is much better than keep on 9%. China today is the second largest economy in the world. It's impossible to keep 9% of the growth. If China still keeps the 9% of the growth of the economy, there must be something wrong. You will never see the blue sky. And you will never see the quality. China should pay attention to the quality of the economy. China should not. So if we have a lot of influence, you know, like the Hollywood movies things, and we have a, the sports and these things in the, in the, in the GDP, will be much better. So I think, just like a human growth, you can never, this body can never grow, 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 grow. Certain time, the slow of growth of the body was slow, but you should grow your mind grew your culture, grew your value, grew your wisdom. I uh, think China is moving to that direction. And you saw Modi in India? Pardon? Did you see Modi in India? Not yet, I'm looking forward to that. So you'll go to India. Finally, there's this. Um, you're one of the world's richest people. Um, your company is one of the world's richest companies. What do you want beyond Alibaba? Well, by richest people, I was, uh, I told my, I was really not happy in the past three months when people say Jack Ma is the richest people of China. Global no. celebrity, they said. In, in, no, I'm not, I'm not. When I started no, the business. You are. Fifth, you are. I never thought, because how many, yeah, maybe I am, I'm not, but I think what I, uh, 15 years ago, in my apartment, my, my wife uh, was uh, at that time one of the 18 founders. I asked her. Do you want your husband to be a rich person? I never said rich person in China, rich person in Hangzhou. Or, oh, you want to be your husband to be a respected person? She said, of course respected, because she never believed, and I don't believe we'll be rich people. <laughs> <laughs> we just want to survive. <clears throat> but I believe when you have $1 million, that's your money. When you have $20 million, you start to have a problem. You worry about inflation. Where which is stuck to buy and this, that's had it come. When you have one billion dollars, that's not your money. That's the trust society give on you. They believe you can manage the money, use the money better than the government and the others. So I think today I have the resources, do more things. With the money we have, with the influence we have, we should spend more time on the young people. And I would say Someday, I'll go back to teach. Go back to school, spend time with the young people, and telling, sharing with them what I've done. So the money is not mine. I just 
happily and um, having these resources, then I want to uh, do a better job. Just tell them your story. Yeah, tell them the story and tell them that if Jack, I, I don't think in this world there are a lot of people be rejected more than 30 times. <laughs> if we, you know, the only thing we never give up, the only thing like we're like a forest gun. We keep on fight. We keep on change ourselves. We don't complain. Whether you are successful or not successful, I find that one per people, when they finish the job, if they make the mistake, if they fail, if they always complain to others, this guy will never come back. If the guy only check himself, yeah, something wrong with me here, something wrong with me there, this guy has a hope. Jack, on behalf of everybody in this audience uh, and a television audience around the world, Thank you for taking your time to be with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. What I loved most is that Jack Ma reminds us that in anything we do, we keep fighting, we keep changing ourselves, we don't complain. Thanks for joining our Fifth Estate Tribe of Mentors. We hope that you are inspired. And remember, your life reflects your thoughts. If you change your thinking, you change your life.